In this video, we'll be talking about patching your inputs. So in the previous video, we configured our devices, and here we see on the left side, audio sources, and on the right side of the screen, we see audio destinations. And once again, this is the patching screen, and which is accessed via the patching quick access screen access button on the uh, this area here. So if I wanted to patch a microphone, which I just happen to have a microphone plugged into port 1 on the DL251 stage I.O. So if I wanted to patch that to input number 1, I would click on it once, go over to the right side, select input for the audio destination, press on that once, and then select any input that I would like to patch that to. So I'll put microphone one on input one. We'll leave that at that for now. The next thing I need to do is I need to patch my master output to some output somewhere in my audio network. So if I go to audio destination or audio sources buses, here I see all of my auxiliary sends, my eight matrices, and my three master outputs. So I'd like to route input left and right. So I can actually route both of those at once if I go up to the top left of the screen and select auto. I can draw a box around any number of inputs that I like and it will select all of them. Now over on the right side of the screen, my audio destinations, I'm going to choose stage I.O. and I know that I have my speakers plugged into let's see the second row third and fourth right so I'm gonna select the first of those and it will automatically patch the second consecutively so now my app master outputs have been patched to the physical connections on the back of the DL251 what I'm also gonna do is patch auxiliary one to output number one we'll say that'll be a monitor mix that I'll be sending what I'm also going to do is I'm going to patch an effect so if I go on the left here so auxiliary two I will patch that to an effect unit so if I go to effects and I will patch it to the first effects unit some effects units are capable of taking eight inputs I'll be using uh, one that has two inputs and I'll patch that same auxiliary two to both inputs on that unit. Now just like if you were connecting in a real uh, effects processor this is my send I also need to bring those effect th that affected signal back into my board so uh, an audio source at this point is one of my effects units so I will select the two outputs from the effects unit and I will patch those to my auxiliary returns. I could patch them anywhere. I could use an input to, to get those effect returns, but I'm going to go ahead and use an auxiliary return. So I'm going to click here, and now my effect return is patched to auxiliary return one and two. And anytime you put your, anytime something is patched, you can put your pointer over that source or destination, and it will tell you. Aux return 2 is sourced from effects 1, effects 1 out 2. It tells you uh, what your current patching situation is. And if I put my pointer over on the left side from an audio source, it tells me effects 1 is routed to aux return 2. So if at any point you're not sure what, where your audio is patched from or to, you can always go to the patching screen and see what's going on, see where the audio is going and where it's coming from. The other neat thing is if there's actually audio passing through here, it would show me a meter underneath so I can verify that audio is indeed passing from that source. Another neat thing that you can do is you can actually label your stage I.O. If I go to this little wrench that's located at the top right hand corner of each of these units, it will show me kind of a picture of what the back of the I.O. unit looks like. 
But what I can do is instead of leaving it input 1, input 2, input 3, all the way down to 48, I can label what will be plugged in there. So I'm planning to connect all of my stage boxes into this stage I.O. And my stage boxes all have their own labels. I have three of them. I have one on the left side of the stage, I have one in the center, and one on the right. So what I've gone ahead and I've done is I've labeled SR for stage right 1. And I've done that all the way down until stage right 20 so that when I am looking at the patching screen and I put my pointer over something, it'll tell me stage right 20 instead of input 23 on the stage I.O. Basically, it'll help me identify where my audio is plugged into a lot quicker versus then thinking about, oh, okay, where is this part of the physical stage snake plugged into the stage I.O.? You can also label in the same manner your outputs. So I've labeled eight uh, monitor sends with what those are going to be. It'll help me in terms of when I patch my auxiliaries to my physical outputs. So label and things like that is just something worth taking the time to do. By the way, while we're talking about labeling, the keyboard that Midas includes with their uh, but the surface is absolutely abysmal. The layout on the keyboard is terrible. Uh, probably the best 20 bucks you'll spend if you buy one of these expensive mixers is a wireless keyboard. I got this one on Amazon for 20 bucks. Uh, it's got like an Apple feel to it and it's wireless so that really helps. And you just set it down and go through your inputs, label all of them, go through your stage boxes, you can label all that too. And it's a lot more convenient to not have to worry about where your cable is. So that's it for patching. In the next video, we'll take a look at input processing, dynamics, EQs, compressors, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time.